What's up, Spurs fans? Thanks for coming in for another episode of SSPN. We have a game recap today. It's April 12th, 2021, and the Spurs just smacked the Magic's third stringers. So, I mean, they they did what they were supposed to do, um, considering this was a back-to-back. This was kind of a blessing for the Spurs, and I think it's even more of a blessing when you consider the fact that you're two games below 500 and these two games, I mean, a hard fought, hard, hard fought game against the Mavericks um, last night. And then tonight you kind of get a little bit of a break with, with the magic who have, they're definitely a, a bottom tier team now after the trade deadline, they, they have a lot of nice young pieces, but they're, mm-hmm. you know, full into that rebuilding mode. Um, and then on top of that, some of the pieces that they got back, like Otto Porter jr., um, and some other people were out tonight as well. So this was definitely um, a little bit of a blessing for the Spurs whenever it comes to a back-to-back. Because another thing that I didn't even consider is they actually lost an hour because they flew from Dallas to Orlando mm. on the next day. So right. like all of the travel stuff and all that wouldn't be going in the Spurs' favor. Um, but <laughs> yeah, this game definitely went in their favor, 120 to 97 of victory, Ethan. Yeah, Jude, I think you, you nailed everything right on the head. Um, this game was a blessing for the Spurs. Naturally, we're going against a bunch of guys that weren't really playing that much at the beginning of the season when the Magic traded Vucevic, Fournier, Markel Fultz went down, and they traded Aaron Gordon, which is like their four best players all gone. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I mean, give the Spurs credit where credit's due. They were really good from the defensive side tonight. The rotations were a lot better than we have seen previously. And something that I was surprised to see, their long ball was falling, primarily from the bench guys. They were really hitting their shots, including, I know we like we, we always rag on Patty Mills and Rudy Gay, but they played some pretty good basketball tonight. Rudy had 12 points, six rebounds. He was a plus 23 tonight. Patty Mills, plus 27, only had six points, but he hit both of his threes. Just an all-around exceptional game from the bench and the starting units. Just, uh, yeah, just a lot improved overall. Yeah, so I, I get I agree with you on everything you're saying with Rudy and Patty. I'm just not convinced yet. Like just because you play well against the Magic's third stringers, oh yeah, it, yeah. Like it doesn't it doesn't really like I I was happy to see what they did, and I'm not like trying to like crap on what you said or anything no, there no, either. Good, I'm good. just I'm just saying I am still skeptical. One game, once again, one game against the Magic's third stringers, you know, is not going to convince me that they're going to be ready to do this. Um, against other teams. Granted, maybe they just got back in their rhythm because we did see them hit shots like this against top tier teams at the beginning of the season. Mm -hmm. But you can also argue, you know, when we beat the Clippers and the Lakers, it is the beginning of the season. And so everybody's still kind of trying to get into rhythm at that point. And, you know, that on switch really hadn't been flipped yet, where after the all-star break, it has been. But The Spurs are back to 500, and I do have some game notes from this game that I had. I kind of stopped taking them like in the middle of the second quarter because it was just like, okay, yeah, they they kind of got into rhythm, and this is how the rest of this game is going to go. But at the beginning of the game, when when Lonnie got hot off the bench and hit those two straight threes to start, Keldon was yelling like mid-shot. Like even before, even before the shot went in, like when he shot it, he was just like, oh yeah, and it would just go in. And so I just wanted to mention that I've, I've mentioned before on this, you know, a couple of times on, you know, how much I love Keldon's energy and for him to just be yelling like mid shot when Lonnie, before the ball was even going in and they both were, were swishes. So it worked out for him, but, but that was pretty funny. Um, mm-hmm. The way that Lonnie played tonight, even though he did cool off after that hot start, he still had an and one later. Um, he's really playing well after the injury. And one of the big things that's kind of been going on in like Spurs headlines and press conferences right now is that Pop is mentioning how, you know, in the past, like the Spurs have always rested guys before it got popular, like the Spurs Mm -hmm. were doing it. They're not really able to do that this year because of the playoff push, right? So Lonnie, even though he was hurt, got a lot of rest. So you can definitely tell that he's fresh um, out there playing. And another interesting note about this game, and I wonder if this had to actually do with rest, Devin Vassell didn't play until about five minutes left in the second quarter. 
Um, so the way that I wrote it down in my notes was once again, these Rudy Patty lineups, I'm pretty sure the lineup was, it was either Eubanks or Pirtle. I can't remember, but one of them two, Patty, Rudy, DeMar and DeJounte, or actually I think it was like Keldon and DeJounte, not even DeMar. And I was just like, once again, man, like why, why isn't Devin Vassell in like, and he ended up playing, like he caught a lob tonight late in the mm-hmm. game. He caught a lob that was pretty nice. So yeah. I didn't realize he had like those ups, like, even though like I knew he was a super athletic player, but to see him catch, that was nice. Um, another funny note that I had, uh, was DeJounte clapped one time when Michael Carter Williams was shooting a free throw like mm-hmm. right as he shot it he clapped and then he missed and so that was pretty funny um, I felt another thing I wrote I felt like I could hear Keldon even when he was on the bench like on the other side of the floor I would just hear him like yeah. yelling during the game um, and then Derek finally got a charge call it felt like I feel like so many times like at least over this past like month of watching Derek has like done a great job of like setting charges and they just haven't been called. Like it was similar to how he played in the bubble. Um, But tonight he finally got one. So Mm -hmm. that, that was really the last thing I had written down. Didn't mean to go on a super long rant there, but those were, those were, those were my thoughts. That's what these recaps are for Jude, for you to go on rants. (laughs) Hey, I don't want to take the shine away from you though. I just illuminate Jude. You can't take any of the shine (laughs) away from me. The side of the camera is, you know, yeah. But uh, you covered pretty much everything I was going to say. Um, the only thing I would say on top of that, the energy, you mentioned it with Keldon. Everybody seemed like they were just, you know, exuding like this urge to just dominate a game. And they did. Um, everyone seemed to be happy with how they were playing it. Like Rudy Gay and DeMar's body language seems to have flipped, especially after DeMar hit that game winner. He looks like he's having fun again. The frustration's not really there. And part of that could be, I don't know if you notice this, Jude, but the refereeing was really on our side tonight. Um, really? I didn't, yeah. I mean, look, dude, everything was on our side tonight. Yeah. I guess I wasn't paying, there was, there were a couple, I feel like there were a couple calls in this game where I remember just being like ref, but I mean, yeah. I, maybe, maybe the, I, I, I honestly didn't pay attention to it probably as much as you did. So Maybe that that does help when it comes to guys' morale, and I'm glad that you mentioned the um, Tamar Rudy body language thing because I that was something that I didn't write down, but I, I was also thinking about that in the game. I was like, oh, me and Ethan have been talking about this, and mm-hmm. this is this is something that was a lot better tonight. Um, of course, a lot of things are fixed, and everything seems really great when you're playing the Magic third the Magic, stringers. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I mean, <laughs> our offense was moving with fluidity. There was really at the beginning, I was a little bit nervous because they got up ahead mm-hmm. with a nine three, and their defense was really stifling Demar like at the very beginning of the first quarter. And I was like, oh god, we're gonna give up a win to the Orlando Magic to the Magic really? third stringers. Yeah, yeah, I was like, are you serious? And then all of a sudden, we just <laughs> flipped a switch, too. and they didn't score for like seven minutes, and we were just going off, and everybody was contributing you mentioned before we started recording that no one not one spur player had more than 20 points and yet we still won by 23 points what what were you saying about that like the first time so that was the third time this season it could Uh be more but i know for a fact i am maybe i maybe i'm wrong no i actually i'm not wrong like i haven't looked (laughs) at the stats but i just know this i know this for a fact i will bet a lot of money on this um yeah this is the third time this year that the Spurs have beat a team by 20 plus points and their leading scorer has scored less than 20 points. I don't remember the like exact games that they were, but I remember that Rudy was the leading scorer in one game and he had 18. And then in another game that happened, um, DeMar had, I think the same amount, like 19 or maybe it was DeShante, somebody, regardless, the leading Mm -hmm. scorer had less than 20 and we won by 20 plus. So that's a good sign. Um, and another thing I want to mention, I know I've just been kind of harping on how it's the Go Magic's it. third stringers, but at the same time, we did kind of get cooked by Darius Garland and the Cavs a couple weeks ago. So, you know, like I said, I've been like, yeah, they did what they're supposed to do. I'm not that impressed. But at the same time, this is still a good thing because, you know, you're, the way that they played tonight was how they were supposed to play against mm-hmm. that Cavs team. And yeah. the Cavs team, that game, played how we played tonight against us. So it's still something to be commended and, and it is a good sign moving forward. Um, you know, that they took care of business and didn't let, you know, this magic's team beat the crap out of them. Like the Cavs did a couple weeks mm-hmm. ago. So 
it was cool. This is like one of the first times the Spurs haven't let the other team even come back, even like a little bit. Like it never got close again after we took that commanding lead. We just kept our foot on their throats. And that was a good sign as far as like team culture and what we're looking forward to doing in the future. Hopefully against some better teams. We have the Raptors next. Probably mm-hmm. also not a tremendous opponent, but Gary Trent Jr. has been balling recently. Right. They have so, freaking Gary Trent. It would be the Spurs luck where he would go out no, and drop. He's gonna 50. he's not he's gonna be like the thing is, he's going to be doing this consistently. Like Gary Trent's like that, and now he's going to be the focal point of the offense. That's I was looking at that, and I was like, "Oh, this is this is a good." I was like, "You know what? I know we have the second hardest schedule left, but you know, this is a little decent run here. Like these are these aren't yeah. too bad of games in this next upcoming schedule." But then you just reminded me that Gary Trent got traded to the Raptors, and he's going to give us forty-five uh, on Wednesday. So he very well might. Uh- but the defensive goal is going to be stopped by 20. Yeah, they need to stop everybody else except for Gary Trent Jr. Because he's not yeah. going to, he's going to be really hard to stop. Uh, but you, you say that. DeJounte on him, or at least Derek, one of them too. They're good. Anyway. You, know you know what's funny? DeJounte's a tremendous defender, but sometimes when he goes against superstars, he gets cooked. And not to say that Gary Trent is a superstar, but we've seen what Luca does when he sees DeJounte's face and Jamal Murray occasionally. Like it, it can get a it's, little bit scary. It's weird because, like, DeJounte will win like crucial possessions against stars, but mm-hmm. they'll still have like, you know, 36 at the end of the game. <laughs> yeah. I, got, I don't <laughs> but then, understand. But then he'll also like slow down people like Harden. We saw that numerous times mm-hmm. and Luca was frustrated there at the beginning of the game, but like yeah. those dudes are going to get their points regardless. But yeah, if you can, if you can keep Gary Trent under 40, that'd be nice. It would be nice. It would be nice. <laughs> no well, pressure. Any, uh, any other, or go ahead. I just wanted to say, lastly, big shout out to my boy, Drew Eubanks. Oh, yes. He played he a great played game. Phenomenally. Just all out energy, 10 points, 10 boards, a double double for the GOAT. Uh, huge slam dunk <laughs> in there. He got, I think the assist was from DJ uh, underneath. He slammed it home. Oh, I, just, I just love watching Drew Eubanks play. He runs the floor every single time, and that's exactly what we need coming off the bench. Yeah, he played really tough. When I was when I was watching him tonight, I, I know once again all of this Magic's third stringers. But Drew, like I was watching this and I was like, why do we even have Gorgie Dan- Jang? Like, look, if we had Gorgie Jang and like we're just like I don't get why we're playing him is my main thing. Like I know he can shoot threes, but like first of all, Drew Eubanks actually has a decent shot. Like he's hit a three in the corner this year. He hasn't taken many. I think that's the only one. He's he one for one. Yes, exactly. But the thing is, like, they do practice with him shooting from out there. It's not yeah. like he's, you know, like just a brick. He's not Gorgie Jang, but, you know, he. I think that he has more of a paint presence. I think he's more athletic. I think he's less injury prone. And I think he plays um, just tougher, I guess. Is, I mean, mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I haven't seen enough of Gorgie Jang to really know that. But I think that Eubanks is just – his chemistry's there. And I think he kind of fits, like, running the floor more, like just being younger – you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So, yeah. I, another final note for me, because I was actually going to ask you <laughs> before you said that, I was like, any final thoughts? Yeah, um, yeah. But I thought Derek played a great game tonight. I thought that this was the best game that I'd seen from Derek in a while. If he can kind of get in this rhythm um, that he was in tonight, just scoring wise, he was he was much more efficient, looked like it wasn't too much of a struggle. I know still one for five from three, but I just... I don't know. You can tell with Derek, even though he's been struggling shooting recently, it's not like his shot's gone. I think that they're, eventually they're going to start falling. Like he's got a great stroke. I don't know. You can call me wrong, but I think once it comes to crunch time, he those those threes are going to start start falling and he's going to take over games. Um, but seven for 14 overall tonight, had some good steals, took a charge and and had 15 on seven of 14 shooting. So um, hopefully Derek can continue to do that. And now I'm looking at the stat sheet again. Keldon, only four points, but you know what he did have? He had 11, 11 rebounds and five assists. So even when Keldon struggled shooting tonight, he found ways to contribute in other ways. Um, and, and that's what we love to see. So next up, let's see if my if my ESPN app will load. Okay, the Spurs have the Raptors. I know we already mentioned that a little bit. And then they have the Trailblazers 
on Friday just to kind of preview that and it's a back-to-back between the Trailblazers and the Suns Friday, Saturday. So those will be fun games um, Mm -hmm. or intriguing games to watch, you know, against some of the West's tougher teams. Um, But that's a a tough back-to-back for the Spurs. Um, Luckily, for one of those, they'll be at home. So, Yeah, and uh, fingers crossed for that Trailblazers game because this could really be, I mean, if everything goes right from this point forward, this could be a preview of our first round playoff matchup. Where are the Trailblazers at? Oh, I'm sorry, the Suns, the Suns, not okay. the Blazers, the Suns. Okay, 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 okay. I was, I was like, Suns, I don't know yeah. about that, Ethan. Not the Blazers. <laughs> We're okay, not gonna yes, play the Blazers. The Suns, the Suns. Yeah, and that's a crazy thing. And I know we should. We'll probably save a little bit of this for the, the Friday podcast, pod. Yeah. But the play-in tournament is very intriguing. Like the, mm-hmm. the closer it gets, the more I like. I'm realizing that you can be like you know, you, you can get the seven seed, you can jump up to that, or you can be a 10 seed and make the playoffs. So, I mean, you can even be the seven seed going into the playoff and lose, like, and yeah. not, not go, which is very intriguing. Um, and a last final note for me, I've been wearing my Louisiana hat these last videos just because it's the hat I usually wear. Finally remember to wear my Spurs hat for these. That's what I need to do every time. So those are, those are my last thoughts on this one. Anything else from you, Ethan? Just go Spurs, go Jude. Go Spurs, go. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been SSPN, April 12th, 2021, Spurs vs. Magic recap. Keep tuned in. You can follow us on Twitter, at Ethan Quintero, at Jude McLaren, or actually Ethan underscore Quintero. There you go. And then mine is just at Jude McLaren, J-U-D-E-M-C-C-L-A-R-E-N. And that's really all I have to say on this one. Thank you all for tuning in, and we'll catch you all in the next one.